right, Salim? One day you'll fly over the water like it's nothing, I promise. You're looking very beautiful this morning, Beatrice Hamilton. How nice of you to say it. Did you sleep in today? No, I was just out walking. Ain't we getting more like a Hampton every day? Now, Emma, shut your mouth, Emma. It's okay, Lois. She's just teasing. Did you lose another button? Bring it up to me later. I'll sew it back on for you. Mrs. Hamilton is asking for you. Mm. And what'll it be today? Lawn tennis, then a few hours of poetry reading? Don't forget that shirt. Why are you so nasty to the girl all the time? It's so hard to be the companion to a rich girl. Hey, I told you to shut your mouth. It is one of us. You ought to think about things before letting that nastiness fly out of your mouth. Edith, please sit down. So, what are you and Amy doing today? I haven't seen her yet this morning. Well, please encourage her to get outside, won't you? Yes. Can't be good to read all the time, can it? No. <sighs> Did you ask to see me? Well, my head is in the clouds today, isn't it? We're expecting a distant cousin of mine, and I am so distracted. Ida Glenshaw is her name. Mm. Poor dear, she's lost her parents. She's been living with two ancient great aunts, Jane and Clara. A rather doer pair, if I recall. And so I've agreed to help Ida find a suitable husband. After all, we'll have the most eligible bachelor staying right here with us for the Greens Cup, Mr. James. Percy, he's from a very good family. A little gangly, if I recall. And then Frederick Arlington will be staying with the Johnstons, so two exceptional bachelors. Um, I would like you to join us for tea today. Me? Join you for tea? I would like you to make Ida feel welcome. I know if you made it your personal mission, then of course she would. Of course, if you think I could be helpful. Edith, you're never anything but. And perhaps you can persuade Ida not to let Mr. Percy's physical appearance keep her from considering him. <laughs> the terrible truth is, she has no property and she's not getting any younger. And then it will be Amy's turn. Our little girl. And then you'll be gone. I will. Well, Edith, dear, you're not going to want to stay here forever. I never thought of leaving Evenswood. Where would I go? Well, you mustn't worry. Whoever would want to marry me? I'm not good at anything. <laughs> I blurt out embarrassing things at inappropriate moments. The art of flirtation is desperately lost on me. I can't ride, or hunt, or dance. I'm afraid, my dear friend, you are stuck with me for as long as you have me. Oh, Amy, you mustn't judge yourself by other people's standards. Your attributes are unique. They're there for all of us to see. Do you think we've yet satisfied Mama's requirement for fresh air? Oh, we've just started. Yes, but Shakespeare waits for us. Oh. Can't we go back and read some more? You can read Juliet. Then you are desperate. We left Romeo waiting for her beneath her balcony. 
So you're coming to tea at last? Mm, I'm so afraid I'm going to say something stupid. Ah, oh, that's what tea is for. To say all the stupid things you've been saving up. <laughs> what is your cousin Ida like? Ida? I barely remember her. Poor thing if she has to come all this way to find a suitable husband. <gasps> Evenswood. Ida, Ida, darling. It's so lovely to have you here. <laughs> How are you? you remember Amy? <laughs> oh, you must be so tired. <laughs> lovely. Edie, here's my shirt. I, I can't do it right now, Lewis. The guest has arrived and I'm expected for tea. You're having tea with the Hamiltons? Please forgive my husband, Ida, dear. He's becoming a contrarian in his dotage. Oh, no, just I have a bee in my bonnet about women riding side saddle. Well, don't you think it's rather ironic that in, in our concern for the propriety of the ladies, we force ladies to risk their necks. They, they should ride astride like men. But the scandal. The hunt clubs would have us arrested for being a public disgrace. Oh, wonderful. A night in jail would do us all a world of good. Maybe we could discuss something a little less political. What? Perhaps our anticipated guest, Mr. James Percy. Doesn't ride side saddle, does he? I heard his heart has been broken. No gossip, child. The rumor is that James Percy fell in love with a girl, desperately. He was about to ask her to marry him when he found out his brother loved her, too. Well, he never said a word. Not even when his brother asked him to stand for him at their wedding. This was years ago, and he's never given his heart again. How tragic. It simply means he hasn't found the right person yet. Or, on the other hand, maybe no one would have him. He was rather unattractive. Looks aren't that important. Uh, isn't that right, Edith, dear? What do you think of Mr. Percy's situation? I think you're right. Uh, a person's face can change over a lifetime, but the heart can stay true forever. It seems that Mr. Percy has a very pure and beautiful heart, one that would be worth winning. Well said, Edith, dear. Edith, <laughs> you're a romantic poet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the path down to the stables. In the summertime, it's covered with the most beautiful wildflowers. And uh, over there is a path that leads up to the crags. If you'd allow me, I'd love to show it to you one day. How can I thank you? You've been so kind to me. Oh, I, I just, I want you to feel at home here. We all do. I, I mean, the Hamiltons and I. I see you've become quite comfortable with them. My aunts tell me you've been here since you were an infant. Mr. Hamilton saved you from an orphanage in Italy. Yes, they've been very kind to me. I love them as if they were my own family. Of course. A child in such dire circumstances could have ended up anywhere. But you landed here with all of this and access to the best society. <laughs> that's not, I don't really socialize. I am just Amy's companion, that's all. Shall we continue? You don't think about marriage? Me? Well, you can't be Amy's companion forever now, can you? I bet you have some deep secrets of your own being the romantic poet that you are. Perhaps when we've become better friends, you'll share them with me. Excuse me. Hello, Edith. I'm going into the village for Mrs. Hamilton. I was wondering if you needed anything. Are you sure you're not going to escape a certain Ida Glanchon? Oh, no, sir. She's been very kind. She's so elegant, I'm sure Mr. Percy will be quite taken with her. <laughs> well, yes. As a matter of fact, you could get me a box of cigars. Thank you. Mrs. Hamilton asked me not to buy you any more cigars. Yes, well, never mind that. How, uh, how did Salim do this morning? 
He still won't jump the water. Well, you, you stay with him. Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. You are incorrigible. Thank you. Likes you. He can be very selective about who he lets near him. Twisted nearly in half, he did. If you don't mind, I'd like to keep it, sir. Sir? Oh, uh, no, I don't mind. I... No one will ever believe it. What is it? You're, uh, you're, you're, you're positively, um... Don't you ever get tired of it? Last time I saw you, you made me sit in that armchair until I finished reading all of Oliver Twist aloud. <laughs> well, I warn you, she hasn't changed nearly as much as you have. <laughs> well, we're delighted that you can ride in the Green's Cup. Your invitation is an honor, and I believe I've just the horse to do you justice. Well, you don't think we invited you here for your company, do you? Oh, Henry. Though I must warn you, the locals don't take kindly to losing to out-of-towners. And we have years of tradition to uphold of absolutely wretched sportsmanship. Our Ida is quite the horse fancier herself, but she's far too modest to announce that, aren't you, my dear? Perhaps she'll tell you if you join them for a picnic tomorrow. Might you do that, Mr. Percy? On one condition that you all call me James. James Percy. My, what a lovely name that is. Do people tell you that absolutely all the time? Oh. <laughs> No, no, it was my brother John who blazed the trails. He loved it up on the cracks. So you must share his love for the outdoors then. Well, no, not, not really. Far too many bugs and things. I, I, I'm particularly fond of this sofa here. 
<laughs> Papa's adventures come in the form of endless letters to various publications. He's becoming quite legendary for his opinions. Oh. Not the brilliance of them, mind you, just their sheer abundance. Oh, you nasty girl. <laughs> Look who I persuaded to join your picnic. Oh, how did you? I can never get Edith to socialize. Well done, Mrs. Hamilton. That's very fortunate, you know, because Edith is the one who best knows the trails. Mm -hmm. Can't we persuade you to come with us? Well, if anyone could, you could, my darling. But no, I'm far too sensible to walking up hills for no good reason. Oh, James, uh, this is the friend that I've been telling you so much about, Edith Adelon. Well, it's you. You've already met? Not only that, I'm already indebted to her. May I return this to you now, Miss Adelon? Oh, thank you. I see you're healing nicely. Thanks to your prompt attention. It's remarkable that someone who doesn't socialize should know so many people so intimately. Oh, dear, the time is getting away from us. Shall we get going, young man? Uh, Louis, Cook will need you back as soon as you've set out. Yes, ma'am. I can help you. No, sir, I'm fine. Besides, you'll be too busy helping the ladies over logs and raging brooks. Raging brooks is an oxymoron. <laughs> Make sure Amy behaves, will you please? Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Remember when we were young, Henry? I thought we still were. I understand you've been traveling abroad, James. Are the parties really as grand as they say? Do they last for days? I was there on business. I'm afraid the meetings did last for days. <laughs> I can only report that I'm happy to be home. This, this is my true love. True love? Does that mean you're giving up on the human race? That's far less complicated, anyway. Mm. If it were up to me, I'd live with nothing but my wits out in the wilderness. <laughs> a feral animal. Uh, it's just like Thoreau. Have you read him, too? Yes, as a matter of fact, But just you wouldn't reading. really want to give up your property, your horses, and all of the beautiful things there are to own for nothing. But you can't think of it that way. It wouldn't be for nothing. He'd possess all the sky from here to the horizon, all the air and all the sounds that we don't even think of listening to. A person could have all the money in the world and couldn't buy any of that. So you're a naturalist at heart, Miss Adelon. <laughs> that sounds far too grand for what I am. It's just all I know. Unlike Ida, who can appreciate both the great outdoors as well as the pleasures of the city. I was at the summit once, and I came across a rare Tigridia pavonia. By yourself? Were you terribly frightened? <laughs> Tigridia pavonia is a flower. It's perfectly harmless. Uh. Mm -hmm. I think I'll take a little walk. Oh, let mm. me come with you. I want to find a tiger flower, too. <laughs> Bye. So you do enjoy nature, Miss Glenshaw? Not in the manner of Miss Adelon. Though I do believe what might occur between a man and a woman to be most natural, Mr. Percy. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that! You've been here before and you never told me? Amy, if I told you everything, you'd get bored with me. Oh, never. Edith, I want to know everything you know. I want to know everything the whole world knows. <laughs> Do you know that Mr. Percy doesn't mind discussing philosophy with me? Oh? I thought that men were genetically required to ramble on within the confines of athletics and the bloodlines of their animals. But he knows everything. So you've changed your opinion of him? Oh, he makes me see things in a whole new light. You'll see. <laughs> Amy, be careful. Is that a tiger flower, Edith? <laughs> Here, hold on. Uh, hold on. Uh, I can't. You must. Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Uh, uh, Amy! Uh, I need it. I'll try and pull you up. Please. Uh, Amy, I'm scared. Uh, I know. Amy. Uh, 
Hey, Mom, take hold of my arm. Take hold of my arm. Hold on tight. Help me. Here we go. Here we go. Hold on. Hold on tight. I've got you. I've got you. Just take small steps. Because your arm hurt, Miss Adelon. My scarf. Miss Adelon, don't. Don't. It was my mother's. I'm afraid it's gone. We should get back. All right. Very slowly. He was supposed to look after her. Poor Amy. A dislocated shoulder is extremely painful, but it heals quickly once it slips back in. Oh, good. You girls are very lucky. You had no business climbing the crags. Thank you very much for coming so promptly, Doctor. We appreciate it. Mm. It wasn't our Amy's fault. Oh, it wasn't anybody's fault either. Edith had been up there before. She knew how steep it was. No! She saved my life. She risked her own to do it. It was terrifying. I was slipping away, but Edith wouldn't let go. If you'd been there, then you would have no, seen No, no, no. Ida's just being protective, aren't you, dear? The important thing is that you were both safe. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Don't be, child. You saved our precious daughter. Henry, what can we do to thank her? Well, I don't know. Yes, I do. She can come to the ball. What? Hmm? <gasps> yeah, we'll, we'll celebrate her heroism. What do you say? The Green's Cup Ball? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Why? No, I... I it'd be a break with tradition. Oh, the oh. devil take tradition. You'll be with us. Come on, what do you say? Yes. Hmm? Do it. Say you will. James will be so pleased. Oh. <laughs> I would interpret that as a yes. Wouldn't you, Beatty? Yes, I would, dear. Excellent. Then that's settled. Come on. We'll leave her to have a little sleep. Come on, girls. Come on. Come on. Lewis, have you seen Miss Avalon? She's by the pond. Thank you. This is yours, Miss Adelon. You went back to get this for me. Thank you. Quite the rider, Miss Adelon. May I? Oh. Well, I'm afraid riding is all I'm good at. I find that hard to believe. <laughs> I should think there'd be a great many things you'd be good at, Miss Adelon. Everything else is such a struggle of etiquette and propriety. Out here, it's instinct, not manners. I ride every morning for just a taste of that. You can leave all matters of manners and propriety to others. I can be sure you're the only woman out riding hours before the ball. Oh. 
I'm afraid that was not the best idea for me to accept. Oh, but you must go, and you must promise to save a dance for me. Oh, no. Oh, no. But why? Have I said something to offend you? No. Uh, I can't dance. <laughs> More modesty. Not a step? Not a step. Come, let me show you something. Dancing is just like riding. It's all instinct and a little counting. <laughs> you step forward on your right foot as I step back on my left, and we take six steps to make one revolution. And... I can't... <laughs> Close your eyes. Just your waltz. with the Hamiltons now, huh, Edie? Excuse me, Miss Adelon. Wouldn't you go if they asked? They wouldn't ask. This necklace, uh, you know the one. I wanted to eat it. Yeah. Are you ill? No, I'm not ill. I'm defeated. These trousers have shrunk. Oh. Shrunk? Yes. Oh. Well, no, no, that's no, what they do. Shrunk. No, they've shrunk. I mean, they're, no, they're really it. shrunk. I mean, it's just, oh. no, it's quite too distant. Uh. Um, are we doing the right thing, Henry? What do you mean? Do you think that, you know, we will be raising some eyebrows bringing Edith tonight? Oh, no nonsense, Beatty. No, no. These are civilized people. Besides, they won't even notice Edith when I enter in the all together. Oh, bless us. This is a funny woman. Oh, come on. No, no, come wait. On. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Nice amethyst. You say there's more where this comes from? It's too bad your poor, sickly mother can't use this stuff anymore. Well, she's old. Like I said, she doesn't go out much. She'd rather have the money than the memories, huh? Something like that. With enough items of this quality, the old sick mom could have a whole new life for herself. That's right. A new life. That's what she wants. It's beautiful. We want you to be happy tonight, Edith. Just like you've made everyone else. Even Ida. Although she doesn't always show it. 
I don't think Ida likes me very much. Oh, you mustn't say that. No, Ida's just a little high strung. You know, rather like her mother was before she got married. Oh, she'll come around. Oh, especially now. Well, I understand Mr. Frederick Arlington is quite anxious to meet her tonight. So if Mr. Percy isn't careful, he's going to have some competition for her attention. What's that face? I promise you, Ida adores you. And she's going to need your help more than ever now. Do be patient with her. Oh, Ida, how delightful you look. Pretty. Thank oh, you. Oh, how I love you. You look lovely, Miss Glasher. <laughs> Ah, uh, Mrs. Hamilton. Oh, that is you. Edith, you look wonderful. Shall we go? Let us You're not nervous, are you? No. Well, maybe a little. Well, it's a lot of pomp and circumstance, but actually rather few rules. Try to avoid food caught in here when you're shaking hands, that sort of thing. <laughs> Miss Glenshaw. You are Miss Glenshaw, aren't you? I'm Frederick Arlington. I've heard so much about you. You do speak, don't you? Frederick Arlington. What a lovely name. But you must hear that absolutely all the time. Welcome to my uncle's home. May I? I do I was going to introduce her to your nephew, but I see he's already quite beaten me to it. <laughs> yes, uh, Henry. Yes, Alice. Isn't that your girl? Which one? I, I, I suffer an embarrassment of riches tonight in that direction. Come on, let's go and gorge ourselves at our good host's expense. We'll see you later.
They're rather lovely in the moonlight, aren't they? The garden. Perhaps we should investigate them more closely, even though it is rather secluded. Shouldn't we join the others? What would you think if I said no? I'm sure a woman of your breeding wouldn't want people to get the wrong impression. They might even think she was too eager. Avalon, I've barely had the chance to get to know you. Would you be so kind as to dance with me, Edith? I believe the next dance must be mine. Perhaps the one after that, my friend. It's just like riding. Not at all. Henry. Hello, Arliss. I'm ready for my apology. <laughs> Your apology for what? For insulting me and my family in my own home. Oh, Arliss, you put on a lovely party. Perhaps you've been enjoying it a little too much. It worked to me, Henry, to have you ejected from the club entirely. Now, there's an interesting idea, since it was the Hamiltons that founded the silly thing in the first place. Now, you see, you're behaving just like your brother. My brother? Improper, inelegant, common, and mocking. Tradition is not silly, Henry. At least he had the decency to leave the country if he didn't John respect... John has been dead all. for over 20 years. Please don't speak ill of him. I need a word with her. You'll forgive me, won't you? What? Look at what you've done. What happened? Now, you must listen to me. I can see what you're doing, and it will come to no good. What did I do? Oh, of course they're attracted to you. You're young and pretty, and why wouldn't you try to entice them? Entice? I'm not blind, Edith. <sighs> and I'm not being cruel to you. I'm merely saving you from a terrible mistake. Men like James and Frederick, they come from a world that you know nothing of. Not really. You see the dances and the refined manners, but not the reality. That you could never understand. What mistake? I, I don't understand. I want to help you. If you were to marry a man like James, well, you'd only fail him. In the end, you would embarrass him in this kind family that has taken you in. I would never harm any of them either. You've ruined the ball with your mockery. Please don't raise your voice. And I have not ruined your, until now, perfectly pleasant party. You're drunk. But why else bring your help where she doesn't belong? No, Arliss. Edith is one of the most decent people I have ever known. Now, while you're rummaging in your bag of traditions, for God's sake, try to find a little compassion.
Do you believe me now? You're not one of us, Edith. And if you care about this family, if you care about James Percy, you'll stay away. Stay away from a world you'll never be a part of. Not really. There you are. You're not leaving, are you? It's late. No, it isn't. Not terribly, anyway. Well, at least let me walk you out. I just want a few minutes without people. I don't know where to begin. Since we met, something's happened to me. I've lost all sense of what my life was. I have no coherent thoughts. Well, that's not true. I have one coherent thought. The same one over and over about you. Oh, please don't do it. So please just listen. When I was young, I felt desperately in love. But when it ended, I was broken. I remained that way. And so I thought a man just gets one chance, just once in a lifetime. But it isn't true. Edith, you've proven to me that I can feel again. You mustn't say these I things must. to me. I must. The words are choking me if I don't tell you. You I... can't. Not to me. Not to me. I believe our dear Amy is infatuated. Obviously, James finds her too young to be suitable. But still, I think you can see the point I was trying to make the other night. I wasn't trying to be cruel, you know. Thank you, Ida. We're friends, after all. In fact, I have a peace offering to make. I've persuaded Aunt Jane to allow you to go and live with them. They'll need someone to feed them and help them with the house. It isn't as grand as this, naturally, but at least it would solve a lot of your problems. And who knows, a new situation, you might even find a match for yourself. Someone who's more suitable. Uh, there you are. The elusive Edith. Are you joining us at last? Thank you, Frederick. Perhaps another time. Think about it. Think Edith, dear. Transitions are always hard. But really, isn't it only fair to let Amy find her own companion now? Determined that the trials don't apply to your horses? One of the privileges of being president of the cup. Nah. Besides, uh, my horse's bloodlines are older than your family's and mine. Indeed. No one questions their ability to qualify for the race. Perhaps the same uh, principle could apply tomorrow. You wouldn't have to race, we'd just give you the cup anyway. <laughs> I'll race, Henry. <laughs> and you will convey our condolences to your Mr. Percy, won't you? For what reason? You haven't heard. No, yeah, what? His stallion stepped in a hole and bowed a tendon. Oh. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, we hope he's not too terribly down in the mouth about it. Oh, no, I, I'm sure he'll be able to put it into perspective. After all, it's, it's only a horse race. Henry, you remember how much my father revered the Greenstone? Indeed, I do. Yes, he was of the opinion that competition proved the metal of good breeding, horse and man. Well, he particularly loved and relished testing his theory against your father and your brother. Looked forward to it all year. Hmm. So it's a pity you failed to produce a rider, Henry. Rob me of something to look forward to with the same vigor. Edith! Edith, where are you? Edith! 
Could you come here, please? Oh. What happened? Come here. Come on. Sit down. You just... I want you to help me. You know, you just... I've lived my whole life here in the company of pompous morons like Arliss Johnson. And my whole life, it has irritated me, and I refuse to believe it. But now, I believe it. By God, do I believe it. And you know the worst, the most unforgivable thing that these people have done to me? What? They robbed me of my brother. Oh, yeah. That's, that's why he left, you know, because he, he, he couldn't stand the idiocy, the, the hypocrisy of this society, all the Arliss Johnsons of this world. And, you know, he thought I was one of them. And I was, but not now, not anymore. Uh, for years, I've, I've, I've mouthed seditious ideas, but I have done nothing. Now, there's something I want to do. Now, you, you, might, <laughs> you might think this is a little silly. I, I'd like us to win the Greens Cup, and I know Salim can do it. Yes, he yes? can. Good. But I... I think you might have a little trouble with him. He's a bit of a handful. No, no, no. I'm not going to ride the stupid animal. No, you have to ride him. I can't jump side saddle. Of course, no. Astride, you have to ride him astride. In fact, you could use my brother's saddle. It's probably still in his trunk. Women aren't allowed. Well, that's the whole point. Why the hell aren't women allowed? Did you ever hear anything so stupid? Why'd you raise your eyebrows when I said hell? Last Sunday, preacher said it 17 times. I counted. <laughs> They won't let me. There are no written rules. Let me take care of them. Hmm? Edith. Oh, Edith. Please do it. Hmm? We'll win. Show it to me. Please, Evie. Let me see. You're stealing from the Hamiltons. What's happened to you? Nothing. You're stealing. Stealing? Did the Hamiltons break the back day in and day out to earn Evenswood? They have all this because they were born to it. They don't even know we exist. That's not true. They are very good to us. Open your eyes. You think you're one of them, but you're not their blood. You're not family. They don't care about you, Edie. Not like I do. This should be yours. Stop it. I am not a thief. And neither are you. What are we going to do? Don't turn me in. Louis, you know I would never... Promise me. I'll give you my word. If you promise me, you will never do this again, ever. Do you understand? Go on now. You mustn't be in here. doing in there? I was just returning the necklace Mrs. Hamilton let me wear to the ball. 
By the way, I received a letter from my aunt. You haven't forgotten them, have you? I fear rejection from you now would be almost cruel to the poor old things. Yes, I understand. Are you sure, Edith? Are you absolutely positive? Yes. I can't imagine the house without you. I, I, I've, I've just never pictured it. But you said yourself that one day I might move on. Have my own life. Yes, but not so soon. I mean, right after the Greens Cup. I, I, I never meant that. It's so generous of our Edith to help my unfortunate auntie. Yes. I, I just so hate change. I, I, I fear whatever it brings can't possibly make me happier than I am right now. But that's selfish. You are young. Change means something else to you. So, of course you want to go. Oh, Edith, dear, what will we do without you? Now, remember that Salim hasn't had a chance to see the course like the other horses. Now, the water jump is the toughest. Sir, now, I, you... I think this is a mistake. Nonsense, you'll be fine. As long as you remember, it's just like dancing. You can do it. Edith, I'm so excited for you. Good luck. Henry, are you sure about this? Don't you trust me, Mrs. Hamilton? Yes, but what if Edith makes a spectacle of herself? What is this idiocy? Hello, Arliss. Henry, you've gone too far this time. Are you mad? You should save your energy, Arliss. This girl can ride rings around you. This is not permitted. She's not even family. I read the rule book. It says nothing about There is no rule dance. book, Henry. It oh. is tradition. And this is not croquet. It's dangerous. And she's riding astride, which is a disgrace. And I will not allow it. I will absolutely not allow it. You are afraid of Edith making a spectacle. Really, Arliss? No. No, absolutely not. Arliss, if anyone were listening, and I do believe that everyone is, it might seem as though you were afraid of losing to a woman. <laughs> yes. Oh, let her ride. What harm could it do? In fact, if she can't, I won't. Anyone else like to weigh in on this? Stay out of my way. Do you hear me? Her blood will be on your hands, Henry. This is not her place, and I'll make no sacrifices. Edith, keep your concentration. We're already part of you. Good luck. Go to it. <laughs> Ladies first. Oh, another writer's got 
gone down. She's in sixth place. Oh, go, she crosses Nina. the meadow. Go, Nina! Go. Coming to the bridge. And Edith? She's still in sixth place. Oh, now comes the biggest test of all. Water jump. Celine's never jumped the water before. What did you say, Father? I, I, what? I said no. She's having a wonderful time. Congratulate you after the race, but you were surrounded by everyone, and and after the other night, I I feel I said some things I shouldn't no, have said. No, please, I don't want you to take back what you said to me. I play your words over and over again inside my head. But why did you run away? You must understand that it isn't you. Everything you do, your words, your kindness. But what is it? Something has made you unhappy. It's not my happiness, I question. You and I are very different, James. Edith, that doesn't matter to me. It matters to me. I've accepted a new position, and I'll be leaving Evenswood. <laughs> are you coming to dinner? Yeah. Or are you hibernating? <laughs> this, is, this is a poem I, I, I wrote to John when I was ten. He, he took it to Italy with him. Look at all this stuff, Beatty. I was I was so angry with John for dying. I, I never looked through this before. I, why am I such a stubborn old fool? Hmm? So we can all tell you we love you despite your being a stubborn old fool. Don't be long, dear. No. Oh, dear God. Oh.
thought you were going to join me for a sherry. I've changed my mind. That happens. I think there's something you'll want to see. Pardon? It's Edith. She's asked for you. She took the path toward the garden. Edith. Did you follow me here? Like your obedient dog. I've been listening to all your quiet little signals for me. My God, they're so subtle, I almost had to read your mind. Which is what you wanted, isn't it? Someone who knows you better than you know yourself. So, now I'm here with you, as you commanded. Alone. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Arlington. I'm afraid you've misread whatever signals you think you might have heard. Did I? It was their subtlety that intrigued me. You could see I have no use for overt women. They bore me. I should be going. I... Please. I can offer you so much. If you let me, I can give you the sort of life you've never even imagined. Let me. Edith. Oh. It's none of your business. What has happened? Nothing. Mr. Arlington is no gentleman, sir, and Edith's been made to suffer his undignified behavior. What are you looking at? Go! What have you done to her? Nothing. What have you done to her? What difference does it make? She's just a servant. Call her what you will. She'll never be our kind. What did you do to Edith? What did you do to Edith? Sir, what did you do to her? Nothing. Sir? I was just remembering <laughs> a gust of wind uh, that first moment it was summer you were so, you were so young <laughs> if I'd been your father I'd have shot me You were wearing white, and your hair was was tied back so politely. And then a little a little gust of wind suddenly did what I wanted to do since I first saw you. It just took it took a little strand of your hair and just caressed your face with it. And I knew then that I'd love you forever. That's, that's what I'll remember, Petey. 
really, I, I have to ask you a favor. What? Something, something has happened. I, I had to talk to Edith alone. Edith? Please don't ask me to explain. You ask, ask Edith to come in. You rode magnificently today. It's in your, in your blood, isn't it? Maybe it is. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I should have known. Known what? In my jacket, there's a leather pouch. Just get it, get it. You know, when I, when I went to Italy to, to bury my brother, he left no, no letter, you know, we hadn't, we hadn't spoken in years. And there was no, no evidence of, of, of his childhood. There was nothing to remind him of, of Evenswood. All I found was this, this abandoned infant who was the daughter of his maid. I was so taken by her sweetness. And every day since then, I've been blessed by that same sweetness. I think I almost left you there. Oh, it's all right. That was so long ago. Uh, you know, I, I was so angry with my brother that I, I didn't, I didn't go through his things. I robbed you, darling Edith. I robbed you. What do you mean? Open it. Open. Who is she? She's your mother. This is my mother? Yes, she's your mother. She died, though, in that same epidemic. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You've done nothing wrong. You saved me. You raised me as your very own. I was just a stranger to your family. No, no, no. My brother, John was your father. What? Yes. How could that be? <laughs> they were married. They were married. It's all there. And there's more. I eat it. I beg you from my soul. I beg you to be good to them. Because I, I won't be here, you know, to help them. Stop. You know I will always take care of them. I know. I know. Please forgive me, Edith. Please forgive me. Forgive you? For what? You were the only father I have ever loved. I love you too, Edith. I always have. to rest the mortal remains of Henry Otis Hamilton. His spirit, however, remains alive in all of us here today. His loved ones, his loyal wife, Beatrice, Amy, and Edith, whom he loved for his own. From this day forward, for the rest of our own days on this earth. We will nourish 
His Spirit and keep it alive with our memories. What do we do now? I didn't know I felt scared. Promise you won't leave us, Edith. Promise you'll stay. Yes, of course I'll stay. Oh, no, I couldn't bear any more change now. You know how I feel about change, Edith. It doesn't bode well when one is already perfectly happy. Right now, I want to just hold on. Keep things exactly as they are. I can't imagine how I could have been blind to it all these weeks. Tonight, I only beg your forgiveness if this has hurt you. But at last, my senses have returned to me. I see before me the woman I have always hoped for. And it is you. Yours in devotion. I had no idea Papa was so romantic. He wrote that when he was very young. Would you indulge me with another? Of course. My dearest Beatrice. relations. So I could tell you anything I wanted and we couldn't get mad and leave. Pretend we are blood relations. Then I have a secret to tell you and I'll burst if I don't tell someone. Though I suspect it won't make you entirely happy. I promise if it doesn't please you that you won't let us show. I'll try. <laughs> well, I've known for a while. And I've wanted to announce it, but I, I don't know how. You don't have to. I know. Did James tell you? He didn't have to. It's clear, Amy. You're perfect for him. And of course I'll be happy if you and James marry. Marry James? Why would I want to marry James? I don't want to get married. Oh, Edith, you should see your face. Well, then what? I'm going to go to college. It's all James and I talk about. He knows so much about the world, and I can learn it too, he says. Why would that make me unhappy? Because I'm going to be leaving you. Remember, once I promised you I never would. And now I'm going back on it. That part is going to make me very unhappy. And with Papa gone, too, the house will seem... He did say something. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> will you?
will you help me tell Mama? I don't want to upset her anymore. <laughs> Can you convince her that it's not a terrible thing to be bookish? We'll tell her you're going to change the world, just like your father would have wanted. <laughs> I think she'll be very proud of that. But you have to promise to write every day. Would it be awfully irritating if I wrote twice a day? <laughs> so, you're really going back to the city? Yes, sometime tomorrow. I thought you might just head off to your beloved wilderness with nothing but the clothes on your back. Unfortunately, we don't always get what we want in life. Well, I have made it my personal goal not to accept that philosophy. It's too bad we didn't get to know each other, really. We'll have to find another chance. Actually, I think we know more than enough about each other. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sound harsh. I think you did. Forgive me, then. I think you can't help yourself. I think your disappointments have turned your heart cold. And it is your cold, dead heart that says these things. My heart is neither dead nor cold. It's just none of your business. But it's somebody else's, isn't it? Surely you haven't fallen for Amy's infatuation. She's just a child. You're embarrassing yourself. Edith, of course, it's in your face. Edith, the pathetic orphan. What are you doing here? Mrs. Hamilton lost some jewelry and... And you think it's here? How dare you? We were told to look everywhere, that's all. I, I didn't mean to... Get out. Wait. Where have you looked so far? We just started, ma'am. Tomorrow we're to look top to bottom. to enjoy a character for that ship. And we know... happened again? Mother, what is it? That necklace that your father gave me as a wedding gift is gone. It happened last night. We're being robbed by someone who lives amongst us. Edith, dear, are you all right? You look a bit shaken. Excuse me. That was rather odd, wasn't it? Have you seen Lois? Not today. Where did you find them? In your bedroom, Edith. My bedroom? I'm, I'm sure there's a logical explanation for this. Of course, if you could just tell us what it is. I don't know. I don't know how they got there. You don't 
don't think I could have taken them, do you? Perhaps she forgot to return them the night of the ball. They did look beautiful around your neck. No, I, I, re I replaced them the next day. Remember, Ida, you were there. You saw me coming out of the bedroom. Edith, dear, I don't know what you're talking about. I wish I did. Edith, say something. Why did you walk out so suddenly this morning? I thought I might have known uh, who. Of course you did. Who? I can't say. Well, surely your loyalty cannot lie elsewhere. After all this family has done for you. Please forgive me. I, I gave my word. But why would this other suspect put the necklace in your room? You have to tell me how this happened. I can't have a, a thief living in my own house. This is tormenting her. Can't you see? There must be some explanation. Edith, let me help you. You don't have to explain anything to me. I couldn't begin to. I know you couldn't betray them. Edith, let me take you away from here. I could make you safe, and, and if you let me, I, I might even make you happy again. You know, being a true friend, your kindness is far more than Edith, I deserve. this isn't the kindness of a friend you hear. I'm trying to tell you that I'm in love with you. Oh, James, I have nothing to give you. Nothing but your heart, which is more than I could ever hope for. Edith. Come away with me. Did you... I said these words an hour ago. I could have told you that I've loved you from the moment that I saw you. But you can't take me away from the shame that goes with me now. Don't you see? It will follow me no matter where I go. Edith. I have nothing to give you. Perhaps she needed the money. Desperation pushes a person to do foolish things. Shut up, Ida! Children. These are private quarters. Here, take it. It's poison to me. Why? Find one missing. I already sold it. See, I told you. So, you and Edith were partners, stealing from poor Mrs. Hamilton. No, Edie wouldn't steal. But she tried to set me straight. You, you were there. You almost saw me yourself. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you do. You were talking to Edie right outside the missus' room. She was returning something. Well, surely you can't believe him. A, a pathetic common thief. Well, Ida, you've dug your hole deep enough. I think you should consider a new home. You're no longer welcome in ours. You should have this, too. It's burnt. Edie tried to burn it. As I was running away, that reminded me that, that Edie's goodness would haunt me no matter where I went. Mother, what is it? Oh. Uh, Emma. Please bring Edith. Edith, dear, uh, please sit down. How did you find that? 
We waited for you. Please leave us. I, John Otis Hamilton, do give and bequeath my entire estate to my only child, my daughter, Edith Adelon Hamilton, who shall inherit Evenswood upon the 25th year of her birth. Stop, please. I never wanted you to see that. You tried to burn it. But why? There's a means that you and I... Mother, Edith is our own cousin. Yes. yes. You knew this? Don't you see? I already had everything I wanted. I had your love and your confidence. And I had my home with you. Which is more than I could have ever dreamed of. And I thought that would change things. And you, you said yourself that you didn't want anything to change, and neither did I. But... Now, what difference does it make? Because I've lost your confidence. No. Mother, tell her. No piece of paper can... My dear, my dear... Make that go away. There's been a terrible misunderstanding. Ida deceived us. And I accused you unjustly. And I beg your forgiveness from the bottom of my heart. But take this. It's your inheritance. Only if you promise that it will change nothing. Only if you want it to. Welcome home, Edith. Edith! We really are blood sisters now.